So we're just thanking God. Thank God for you, Sister Prince, for bridging the gap as I got on board. As we prepare, we'll be coming from Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. We pray that the Lord is keeping you and guiding you wherever you may be joining in with us. And we know that God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Amen. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 will be our scripture. And I will uh, open up with prayer. Father, we thank you for this day that was not promised to us, but because of thy grace and thy mercy, we have been able to reach and see another day. And while we have the opportunity to see this day, Lord, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us give you the praise in spite of us. Let us stay focused in spite of. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Open up our understanding. Open our hearts. Open our minds that we may receive what you would have for us on this glorious day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we say thank you, Lord, and amen. Good morning, Sister Prince. Good morning. Would you be ever so kind to read uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, please? Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. Two more times, please, Sister Prince. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. Amen. Thank the Lord for the reading of the word, the hearing of the word, but more importantly, the doing of the word. Amen. And as we're speaking on the word, the Lord would want me to try and encourage someone on this morning. Stand your ground in the name of Jesus. Amen. Stand your ground in the name of Jesus. When we look at life, life can be challenging. Life can be difficult. Life can be hard when you try to do it alone. But if we taste and see just how good God is, you will be able to stand your ground in the name of Jesus. Those that know me and know me well, know that my favorite movie in all the world is The Color Purple. And this movie speaks to me on so many different levels beyond what is shown on the big screen. But there were so many layers of psychological and emotional and even spiritual connections that I've had with this movie throughout my entire life. And I could remember as a, as a young teenage man going to see this movie for the very first time with my mom. And this line, there are so many memorable lines that I got, but the one in particular that's standing out to me right now, and hopefully it will make some type of spiritual sense to someone that's listening today, that when, unfortunately, Miss Seeley had given Harpo some ill-advised advice on how to deal with his wife, who was played by Oprah, and her name is escaping me right now, but you'll get the just of it. And Harpo wanted Miss Oprah to mind, and she, in his terms, would mind. So he was seeking out 
some advice from Miss Seeley, who was Miss. Uh, I'm forgetting all kind of uh, not Miss, Oprah, but Miss Sophia. Miss Sophia, yeah, but Miss Sophia and and Miss Seeley. Thank you, Sister Francis. <laughs> and Miss Sophia, not only did she whoop. Harpo, but she marched through that field and found Miss Seeley. And the line that she said that was ever so memorable for me, and many people hear it and they chuckle, and it's a chuckling moment, but it's a serious moment. But more importantly, it is a moment. She said, All my life I had to fight. And I want to focus on that part, but there are other memorable parts to that line. But all my life, we've had to fight. If you really look and understand how blessed, my God, today we are, you've been fighting since the day you were released from your father to be conceived by your mother. You had to fight other potential would be to reach the destiny of the egg. You had to risk the possibilities of being stillborn. You had to risk the possibilities of being uh, uh, having a death by the, the cradle syndrome. And you, 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 you've been fighting ever since you knew that you were in the world. But but when when you got introduced to the Lord, you, you now are fighting with a purpose. See before we were just fighting for survival, but 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 when you stand your ground for what you know is of the Lord, what you know is right what you know that beyond a shadow of doubt is the will and destiny of God in your life, you will stand your ground in the name of Jesus, no matter who the opposition is, no matter how great the opposition is, no matter how dismal it may seem, but stand your ground in the name of Jesus. Now, in this particular book, in the book of Philippians, period, but this fourth chapter, Paul is writing a letter of encouragement, a, a, a letter of hope, a, a, a letter of letting people know that if you stand your ground in the name of Jesus, that, that help is on the way. It doesn't seem how destitute it may be in your life right now. And I wish somebody would say right now, it may seem rough, but God will see me through. But you must stand your ground in the name of of Jesus. Somebody needs to talk back to their device that you're listening on right now and repeat this. God don't need my help. God don't need your help because God is God all by himself. And if he brought you to it, he will bring you through it. But you need to know and understand all you got to do is stand your ground in the name of Jesus. I talked about David last week how he was not intimidated by Goliath, and how he stood his ground in the name of Jesus, and he got the victory. The victory is ours today. The victory is ours right now. I don't have to hope what the end is going to be. I know what the end is going to be when I stand my ground in the name of Jesus. I wish somebody that's hearing me right now would learn how to kill that pride because pride would make you do and say some foolish things. Pride would get you in the way of God when God is trying to fix and remedy 
some things that, that only he can work out. And when you don't think God is moving expeditiously enough, you get in the way and you start messing things up. But I'm here to tell you, stand your ground in the name of Jesus and watch him do his thing. Watch him prevail. Watch him raise you amongst your enemies. Watch he raise you amongst your haters and your backbiters and, and open ways that man thought he had locked and, 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 and find keys and he threw away. And when God is the master key, I hope somebody is understanding where I am today. And when you know that you're standing on the word of God, not your feelings, not your tongue speaking, not your bodily exercises, but the word of God. When you stand on the word of God, no devil from hell can stop you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Many of you that are listening right now, you, you feel abandoned. You feel like no one is listening. You feel like no one even cares. But I encourage you today to stand your ground in the name of of Jesus, and, and when it seemed like that you're all alone, just as my grandmama would say, wretch back and remember what he said, that he would never leave you nor forsake you. You got to know and understand that, that the enemy is, is busy. The enemy is panicking. He's attacking at all angles, and he's attacking so viciously that it seemed like he's winning because you had a little setback. It seemed like he's winning because you're dealing with some sickness. It seemed like he's winning because you're dealing with some heartache. It seems like he's winning because you're in a financial bind right now. But I dare you to stand your ground in the name of Jesus. And when Paul was talking to this Philippian church, he, he was telling them, look, I know it's rough on you right now. And I know it seems impossible right now. I know you don't know which way the help is coming from, but do remember this, that you can do all things, not some things, not most things, not many things, but all things, glory to God, through Christ that strengthens you. I don't care what shortcoming you have, if God called you to do it, stand your ground. I don't care what they're telling you you can't do. If God calls you to do it, stand your ground. I don't care what kind of help you don't seem like you're getting that you need. God is all the help that we need. Therefore, stand your ground and know that he's working it out right now. And, and in that same book, of Philippian, just to let you know that God is serious. He told, yeah, I, I can do all things through Christ. That strengthened me. But somewhere around that 19th to 20th verse, he reminds us that my God, hallelujah, shall supply all of your need, not needs, but needs. See, you got to understand God is the master. And what you need right now, God has the answer. What you're going to need in the hour, God has the answer. What you're going to need the next day, God has the answer. What you'll need in a year, God has the answer. Therefore, stand your ground. Man, you are foolish to be standing your ground and believing that a virgin gave birth to this man y'all call Jesus who ascended back to glory after he died in three days and, and is coming back again. Man, you're delusional. I may be delusional to you, but if you can believe in UFOs, why can't I believe in Jesus? I wish somebody is connected with what I'm trying to say right now. If you can believe what you want to believe, why are you worried about what I believe? I believe what the word of God has said. Therefore, I shall stand my ground in the name of Jesus. 
And Paul is letting the Philippian church know that, look, when nobody else would feed me, y'all did. That's why I'm encouraging today to remind you that what you might not have in the physical, God will make a way. God will provide. God will touch the heart of them that do have a surplus and say, here, I got an extra whatever. You can have it. I don't know why God put it on my heart. Well, I know why God put it on your heart. Because he told us, you stop chasing stuff that the world is chasing because they ain't doing nothing but saving it for my children. And when my children need it in due season, God will release it. That's why we don't have to steal. We don't have to lie. We don't have to cheat. We just stand our ground in the name of Jesus. And when it's time, baby, God will let you know. We used to say in that song, Scripture said it, believe on me, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now, that living water is more than some material things. That living water could be a healing prayer. That, heal, that, heal, that living water can be a hand laid on prayer. That living water could just be sitting there hearing and listening to someone who needs to have an ear for them to release so God can fill them with what they need and release all that anguish. So sometimes we don't have to say a word. Just wave your hand and say, yes, Lord. I'm right here, Lord. I'm not giving up, Lord. I'm not going to give out, Lord. I'm going to stand my ground. When the Lord had me reflect back on my life. Thank you, Jesus. When the doctors told my parents not to let this boy play any physical sports because one bad hit can mess him up for the rest of his days, if not kill him. But, oh, thanks be to God. My old praying grandmother told him, give me that boy. And she sang, I'm going to stay under the blood until I fell asleep in her lap, rubbing my back. And the next time I go to see the doctors, Lord, they couldn't even know what happened, didn't even realize, well, what is going on? But, but, that, but, but when you stand your ground, and I didn't know how to stand my ground in in the beginning, but the old song, the woman used to say, I had a praying grandmother. And that praying grandmother taught my mama how to pray. And, and my mama taught me how to pray when I didn't want to hear how to pray. But when, when God see time that is for you to get the message and had me sitting alone in that ballroom all by myself and, and those who said was my friend, didn't offer me a floor in a corner of a room, but God began to talk to me and raise me up and reminded me that where you are right now, you won't be forever, but I'm going to put my word in you. And when I put my word in you, that's what's going to be your compass. That's what's going to be your guide. That's what you'll have to stand on, and that's what you have to stand firm on. Even when they don't want to hear what you got to say, you stand flat-footed, preach, and teach my words. You don't have to hash it about to nobody. You ain't got to turn cartwheels. You got to stand in the promise of God's word, and I'll deliver who needs to be delivered when they need to be delivered. You can't save nobody. You can't deliver nobody. All you can do is be my ordained messenger. Stand your ground in the name of Jesus. I don't care what the doctor told you. Stand your ground. I don't care what them haters are trying to do to you. Stand your ground. I don't care how they talk behind your back. Stand your ground. Why? Because we serve a mighty, living, and true God that says what he means and means what he says. 
And when you understand that you are in the best place in the world, get out your feelings. Get out your emotions. They supposed to talk about you because you represent the king I am. They supposed to lie on you because you represent the great I am. They supposed to scandalize your name because you represent the truth. And if they did it to the green tree, they sure won't do it to the dry tree. So you stop taking it personal. Stop belly aching. Stop moaning and groaning and acting like the world is about to end because somebody decided to give you a hard time. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And he ain't good just yesterday. He's good right now, and he's going to be good tomorrow, and he's going to be good a thousand years from now. All we need to do is stand our ground in the name of Jesus. And when the enemy find out that you mean what you say, he's going to fight ugly. He's not going to fight fair. He's going to try to do any and everything he can to get you off balance to get you off course. He gonna come through your children. He gonna come through your spouse. He gonna come through your health. He gonna come through your finance. He gonna come through your friends. He gonna come through family. He gonna come through your job. He gonna come from every angle he could think of. But I promise you, my brother, I promise you, my sister, stand your ground and watch the glory and the salvation of God. I'm amazed every time that you go to do good. Just like Paul say, evil is always present. All you got to do is stand your ground. All you got to do is keep holding on. We were singing that song, hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Translation, stand your ground in the name of of Jesus. Watch him see you through. All your life you had to fight. And just because you know who Jesus is now don't mean that the fight is over. You just now can see the fight sometime coming a mile away. And that's the beauty of having the Lord on your side. Because he said, I'm not going to let nothing sneak up on you. I'll give you a warning before destruction. I'll let you know that, hey, this is on the way. But when you have that ear to hear, and when it says have an ear to hear, all it's saying is stay prayed up. Turn your plate over sometime. Keep seeking the Lord's face and not just his hand. And he'll let you know every time the enemy moves. Every time he think he's getting ahead, God going to say this is going to come, but it's not for us to try to react. God said prepare. Did he not warn that the famine was coming? He said it's going to be seven years. But, 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 but guess what? I, I, I'm going to always take care of my children. I'm going to always be a provider for my children. So I don't have to get the pay. Yeah, my resources may be extremely low, but I'm going to stand my ground in the name of Jesus. Because I've never, hello, somebody, seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed big and bread. Yeah, I might be broke, and I might be busted, but I'm so glad I'm saved, and I'm sanctified. 
and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, that felt so good. I know that I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. And that don't mean I think I'm better than somebody. I just know how to stand my ground. I know how to speak when I need to. I know when to keep my mouth closed when I need to. Don't mean I'm a pushover. Don't mean that you got over. I just decided to let the Lord handle it. I let the Lord. I gave the steering wheel to the Lord. I'm a pastor. Now, I'm not trying to drive the direction for my path. I'm going to let the Lord lead me where he desires me to be. I'm going to stand my ground, and for every hater that comes, that's another step or footstool for me to get to the destiny that God has predated for me when I was yet in my mother's womb. I'm not going to get caught up in what anything or anyone else is trying to do other than follow the directions of the Lord himself. So you stand your ground. And just as Paul was encouraging the church, don't you worry about what the world is consumed by. They're going to get theirs. And you don't have to seek Jesus on nobody. Because he's going to remind each and every one of us, remember when I entertained you and you didn't feed me? What you mean, God, if I'd have known, I know if I'd have seen or dealt with you. He said, when you was mishandling such and such and such and such, that was me. But because you was mishandling such and such, indirectly you were mishandling me, depart from me, thy worker of iniquity. And let me help somebody. Just because you going through, it ain't for you to be crying and letting everybody that have an ear to want to hear what you got to say that you going through. He said, guess what? This is part of what Jesus said. If you want to be like me, you got to learn how to long suffer. Sometimes you just need to hush. Sometimes you just need to sit in the corner and wrap yourself up, and you might have to cry yourself to sleep. But guess what? The key is you better go to sleep because God said he never slumbers, no sleep. You get your rest. We've been there do it for a night, but joy is coming in the morning, and in the morning it's going to be all right. Why? Because it's a new day I've never seen before, but because of his grace and mercy, I'm here. So instead of me worrying about yesterday's blues, glory to be, I'm going to give some praise on today's news. And today's news is it's a new day. Y'all talk back to me. I know I can't hear, but just somebody say it's a new day. And because it's a new day, we're going to stand our ground in the name of Jesus. And we're going to let the will of the Lord take over right here and right now. I don't want you focused on those enemies that were strategically placed in your life. Yeah, they were placed in your life to keep you praying. They were placed in your life to let you know that the devil is real. But they were also placed in your life to let you know that God is just as real. And if you're going to believe this word of God, if you're going to believe it, and know what it says, I can do all things through Christ, not through man, not through my book sense, not through my finance, but through Christ, I'll be able to do all things. I'll be able to endure, I'll be able to encourage, I'll be able to stand tall in the midst of adversity. And guess what? I ain't got to say nothing because I have a lawyer that ain't never lost a case. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. I got a witness that will vouch for me. Hello, somebody. And when we understand that it was all by design. We just got to remember that when the storm hits. Don't panic that you're in a storm. Rejoice that the storm ain't going to last forever. Yes, the storm was designed for your growth. 
the storm was designed for your final destiny. And when you get to that other side, you say, how I made it over. Good God Almighty, how I made it over. I want to pray with you. I want to encourage you. I want you to know that wherever you are right now, that whatever you are dealing with right now, God is good. God hears you. The enemy wants you to struggle. God ain't listening to you. The devil is a lie. God hears you. Just because he hadn't moved in the timing you're expecting, that means God is not moving. God is not predicated on time. He's predicated on eternity because in the beginning, oh, my God, he was there, and he will be there forever and ever and evermore. So know and understand that God has you just where he needs you, and I need you to be encouraged right now. I need you to be focused right now. I need you to give him the glory and the praise right now. Let us pray. Father, we stretch ourselves out to you right now, and we ask you to forgive us where we may have fallen short, where we have been ill against our brothers or sisters. Clean our hearts, God. Clean our minds. Clean our thoughts that our praise can be pure, that our praise can be genuine that our praise will be received, that our prayers will reach above the ceiling and knowing that we're giving you all we got while we got it, that we will stand our ground irregardless of who we're facing, that we will stand our ground irregardless of what we might not have, but we will stand our ground in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, that we will stand our ground in the name of truth and salvation. Encourage that man, encourage that woman, encourage that boy, encourage that girl. Encourage that husband, encourage that wife, that they stand in the name of Jesus, that they hold fast in the name of Jesus, that they put aside strife, malice, and confusion, because all of that comes from the devil. And when it comes from the devil, he's trying to break up our ground. He's trying to divide our ground. He's trying to make our ground shaky. But even in the midst of shaky ground, we'll be able to stand our ground because we know in who our help cometh from. And we glorify you for it right now. We magnify your name right now. We sing praises unto your name right now. In Jesus' name, we say yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, we shout victory, Lord. In Jesus' name, we give it all to you right now, Lord. And do it only like you can, O oh God. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the sweet Holy Ghost, we say thank you, Lord, and amen. Hallelujah. Stay encouraged, my brothers, my sisters. Stand your ground in the name of Jesus because this is the will of God in our lives. I am Pastor Prince of the Temple of Refuge Ministries. I'm mighty glad, thankful unto the Lord to be able to be a servant to you who has allowed and trust God enough to trust me to try as best as I can 
to be all that I can for your spiritual guidance. It is truly, truly an honor. And we pray that the will of Lord, of the Lord be done both now and forever. Please stay encouraged. Stay in touch. Stay in tune. Stay saved. Stay focused on the Lord. And I'm going to leave with this one more again because I, I felt so alive when I said it. I'm so glad I'm saved. And I'm sanctified. And I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. We love you. And there is absolutely nothing that you can do about it. So don't you dare try. And until the next time, you all be blessed. And we shall see you on the other side.